charge the motor. Uh -huh. Very unreliable. Uh -huh. If you can afford to have one of those, if you hard it, you get another engine or something. Yeah, I guess. And that's what you have to do. They're Russ is in the middle of be... Canopy Canopy Man. We're going to start calling him Canopy Boy here. Just my impression, if you do what you show on that drawing, that, that kind of, that canopy is out of sight. With that, that would be that like pointy mark. Whether it'll be a point or even a flat panel or a curve, I don't know at the top. That's... The hardest part of this whole job is going to be getting that back end angle right. If the back, wait, the angle you got right now is the one that's critical. Now, is your plan to paint the canopy first just to see what the look is? No, no, so you, you got to black. You never paint the canopy first because when you put the, all the pearl colors and everything in there and then put tape on it to back mask it, picks up, picks up the tape. So you leave the canopy to last. But you got to black it out. I don't want to have to paint over red. I want to have it masked off. Plus, I'll probably pull up all the tape today anyway. I mean, you look at it, lay it out, make a pattern. But that is a, you know, an unusual... No, oh, well, he's got the drawing. We've been working pretty much off the drawing, and, uh, well, we'll see. He's he's the Van Gogh here. That's why we got to cut his ear off if he doesn't come up with a good canopy today. <laughs> anyway, Joe, I am... Well, you got to see, you got him inspired. I like this. You got to come up more often. You got him cooking as brain is frying. Yeah, this really... What I'm going to do... You're going to leave the tape on here and go home, and he can... He can pull the silver up. Yeah, see if, see if he good. can. <laughs> exactly. All you got to do is make a pattern. We don't need that tape on there. Where do you think you get the pattern from, Snooks? Who do you think you're dealing with? Some amateur here? I'll have that patterned out in five minutes. No problem. Give me a piece of eighth-inch plywood. I'll make Come a here, pattern Joe. right now. I right, give him the artist's eye, Joe. We need the full artist's eye here in this session. Look at the kind of technology right, we have at our disposal. Right? Here's the back line. Mm -hmm. You got to put a little radius in here, of course. Oh, and you, then this comes up even like a, this. Even if the radius, you captured this shape. Yeah, yeah right. Cool. Which you can easily do with a piece of masking tape. But I think that that would do better than just having that. You know, I've you seen too many of this is. Oh, well, I think. The, okay. Now, does this? Line. Here's the center line. The center line is the middle of this white stripe, so to speak. So that means that ends there. Is that about right? You know, and there's a lot of different ways of going. You could have that, like, you can have a quarter inch wide thing and have it go this way, or yeah. just to a point. The point, I think, would be at minimum, extremely good looking, especially if that's like that red dagger in the middle. Yeah. And the cockpit up to the. That's Kurt Mullinex's. Okay. Look at it. Now, though. where is Look the at the engine. He's got the engine. It looks like the scale push rods and stuff. Oh, that cool those that? push rods on yeah, the valve. Yeah, how cool is that? All right, I was looking for the push rod to the... Yeah. Now, this just has flaps on the lower one. Yeah, I made him a tune pipe for this, a special tune pipe. I don't know. He didn't tell me if it, if he's flown it yet. But it looks well, pretty different. pretty cool. This is... We saw it at... Were you at that Nats? He flew no, Corsair? No. That, that Corsair flew great. What a unique plane. Really unique. Kurt he made all kind of special bell cranks. I remember meeting him at the 96 yeah. Nats when we were there with our Spitfires. Very, very good craftsman. Yeah, very good. California guy. California, yeah. Southern Cal. Now, this wing, what did he tell you about? Does it detach? Is it a... Uh... Oh, I don't know. I didn't see the plane. I, didn't see, I got pictures of it when it was in pieces, but I couldn't tell if it was like a one-piece plane or if he bolted it together. We're going to get more. I'm hoping I'm going to get some video of it. Man, that landing gear, that undercarriage. Yeah. You better not bounce that too much. <laughs> you better not pull I mean, an Anamuska. We got to tell that story on video of Joe, D7. Joe's retrack oh. plane. That was, that was a scary moment. And that was like a week before Brodak. Oh, yeah. And Just what you need to, to know. Yeah. I was, I was not having any luck with the yellow spit yep. fire. I didn't yep. know where it was, so I wanted something that I could fly. All right. You learn as you go. Yeah. Well, I mean, I got other war stories you want to hear too. <laughs> I told you how to stuntress. Uh, yep. Yep. We know about that. But uh, same, you know, stuntress last year flying right. off of my Bob Baron Stooge. I'm up at this field where I mean, there's absolutely nobody around you, and right. I'm always safety conscious. But I put a new a new tail wheel on mm. and wire, 
hook it up and just start the engine. I had the, here's my Randy 61 in there. And I'm going out to the handle, and all of a sudden I pull my stooge line, and guess what? The airplane doesn't release. So uh oh. You have choices. Like yeah. I, had, I had this choice yeah. on the wheel. I had, yeah, I I had, had choices. choices. Right. So, okay, my choice is do I just sit here and wait for this to maybe launch and burn the engine up? It's running. I would have a ground run of like six or seven minutes <laughs> and let this engine cook. And then it goes lean at the end. Yeah, rawr, rawr, rawr. Rawr. Okay, so I decided, well, Okay, what well, I'm going to do is I'm going to put the handle down and I'm going to run up, grab the airplane and, you know, shut the engine right, off or right. do something. So I run up, I get 10 feet away from the airplane. Guess what happens? It releases. Boom, and I'm watching it get down the runway. And it, <laughs> it, it rolls out about 75 feet, pretty much a straight line, and it runs right into like 10-inch high grass on the edge of the Ooh. And, it, and it turns over, bends the landing gear, and smashes the prop and does all this but I feel well, I was lucky because if this thing would have taken off and oh yeah and ended up in a kitty part you know the kitty oh, yeah. play zone and yeah. wiped out some kid I had the Red Baron at the Circle Burner Field I'm there alone with the camera running and the stooge I run out to the handle pull the wire and it breaks yeah, okay now I'm thinking now you know what Mike stooge it's got to pull a pin out yeah so, did it pull a pin all the way, uh, some way, or halfway? Did you just let the engine run and stand there? Or Eight and a half minutes I stood there like the Statue of Liberty. And at the end of it, it went... Yep. It, at the end, it sucks every drop of fuel. <laughs> Brrrr! Uh, Brrrr! Did any good stunt runs on that <laughs> No, no, no. It, but I sat there and I was thinking, and I got it all on camera too. I go home and I watch the tape and I'm going, how funny is this? <laughs> These are some of the things. Yeah. So, when you were a veteran, this is why I you have war stories. What the problem was, and I had too much, it was hanging up in that slot. So I put another wheel that it, so I make sure that everything is free and you can right, get this right. with. There's nothing like having a guy that's willing to sell oh, no, 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 no. exhaust cubes. <laughs> There's you know, nothing you know. like having a Z-Tron. That would have been so. Up, oh, just shut it know. off. Push it all the way. That's Bye. still out of all the everything that you. I mean, that is one thing that is so cool. Every time I watch it, you just hit it. And oh yeah. Drop. Every time I watch that that walker That'll never, fly off. Ever ever happen. Nope. Again. Nope. But you know, you could have that airplane that bigger and better. And we might have. Swoopier and all. We that. might have a typhoon with a 90 road jet in it, and Rich Oliver will be screaming at me all winter. He's already flying a thing. Him and Al had it out on one of the, the uh, maybe it's, where did they have Richard's plane? On Stuka Stunt? Yeah. Show me how you're. Okay, how you're, canopy man. Let's see how this is going. How these pictures don't come through. Yeah, I got to resolve that problem well, with you. Well, it looks like you've got a high tech, flat low profile panel, bell computer. We're trying to resolve a problem that Joe sends me pictures and here's one of the old Red Baron Bucks Deluxe pictures. But, but we can't get the whole picture to come up on a screen at one time, no matter how we do it. So uh, I have to ask John Pothier about this. There, there's probably a way to do it, but I don't know how And I is. know that the bites, the, the photo is only about uh, pattern. Pick a side. Now, this side, you see this? This comes down a little more quickly. On the other side, it's a little shallower, a little bit, not much. But so which side a, do you like better? Which side do I like better? Mm. I like this side better. The back ends, the back ends of it are pretty much identical. We're going to put a round in right here, a radius. Right Promote right understanding. Here. Joe, what do you think? This this comes to a point on the top. Well, Is that to me that uh, Joe likes I, it? I, I, I kinda, like I it better like than that. I thought I would. I mean, you you could spread them apart and make a little flat in the middle or something. Uh. But uh, I think that that point's kind of sick because you have points on the side of that where all those strikes and I don't know. It just I like that split that split screen top on it. Whether it be a point or do, you could do other things, I guess, or lay it out in. But you don't want to pull pull the silver up. But just having one big blob canopy that wide at the back. Uh, this, I think, accentuates how wide that is in the back. Well, the after. alternative, Joe, is to is to just bring this line up here to about here with yeah, a point. But, the, but yeah, but the, teardrop it. it that's you, the only the only see, alternative. You lose. It doesn't look like a Testarossa 
cockpit. Uh, agreed. This way it looks like a, and actually there'd be room in there for one more window. If you try to see this, you got this one and then you got that stationary. So I mean even if you put them. Okay, but the real car, here's what's different. The real car, this line doesn't follow the hip line. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's what changes it is, in other words, this line is just a continuation of the hip line. In the car, it goes right up. It, it goes where this would be thinner. But you got to lay it out a lot of different ways. I, uh, and once you make a pattern, this is going to be that easy as pie. That, I, I mean, to me, that's for a few that's one. Now, if this was a very narrow fuselage block like right here, well, you, if you did that, it would look it just wouldn't fit. I don't know. That looks pretty cool to me. Now, whether you'd want to square that off or round that off or do something. Yeah, I'm wondering if you square it off yeah, just, further up. You mean like up in here? Up in, well, even Where? further up. You mean, you mean? If, if you took the last eighth inch of this and just lost it, where it just came to a, yeah. a flat or an angle or... Well, there's a lot of different ways of going, but I think that would be outstanding. That, that, that is my... Wait a minute, what are we talking about doing here? That's my kind of canopy deal. This is what, this, if you've left this come to a, not to a perfect point. Yeah. That would seem like that's the, that's more like what you're looking at in a car. This doesn't look like a car. I don't, in fact, I don't know what, I've never even seen a plane that comes to a point. They come... Well, that's not difficult to modify. No, of course not. Of course not. When you make a pattern here, I, I think laying it out in a pattern is... This is the best way to do it because you're not committed to it. The only thing is, you can't make a, a paper pattern based on a center line because the paper will not assume the curve of the, of the turtle deck. Now, how do you want me to make a pattern for this? Do you have any, uh, any thoughts or... Uh... Well, the other way of doing this would be to make a pattern that's not... For the outside. Uh, no, to the outside. Like, in other words, something that would fill this void. Take, take a piece of paper and cut it, okay? Tape it down right on the center line. Trace this. Make the cutouts. That's half the pattern. So then you can take a, a masking frisket or something like that. Mm. Still, a lot of it's going to be how you lay it out in tape and you'll be doing this over top of your red when it's done so this is just well you got to lay the canopy up before you paint the red that's you're going to back mask you're, you're going to back gonna mask paint it. Yeah. Canopy over. yeah okay but i think that these two things back here it's like passenger door driver door side so what maybe you, the point if the point disappeared in there was some kind of a a rounded off, you know, square across the front of that. That might. Happen. What looks different is the aspect ratio of that, and this is this is longer by quite a bit. If you brought this back a half an inch, say, that would bring the aspect ratio in. And where this ends, I'm just looking at it. It's not that that matters. Now, are you going to put a bar in here somewhere? No, I hadn't planned on it. But if you, you mean want like to do a, it, a second. Window, like well, this. I'm trying to make it that it, you well, know. It could be. I mean, that would make it interesting, too. I just, gee, there's so, so many ways to go. But I, that, that canopy is going to be outstanding. Just the shape of it. That's the kind I like on a stunt ship kind of airplane. All right, let me go. i got to go. All right, Les, stuff to do. We'll see you, man. All right. I'm, I'm going to be right behind you in like uh, maybe a half hour here. Coffee. You want another cup of coffee before no, you go? No, i got to go. I don't care for Job. All right, okay. I'd say we got a lot Absolutely. done today. Great okay. job. You, the, sometime this summer we'll be flying. That's why, you know, someplace. Yeah. Now, as always, a great visit with Joe. The next step on this is going to be, and I guess we do most of this off camera, this is just going to be just constant sanding now. I need to sand all these little areas down. Sand the primer, that'll probably be ready for maybe one more coat of primer and then ready for silver. On this part, we want to detail out the little fillet areas, the internal fillets. We'll look at how we want to do that today. 
I've been spending some time airbrushing primer into the back of this to try to get this detailed out a little more. I want to spend some more time on that. So you got a whole, actually a whole day of what will just happen today. It'll just be basically a, uh, a sanding day. And at this point in time, I just relax, take my time, try to uh, get each part as finalized as I can before we're going to lay out the final canopy shape and then of course start painting the red. You would think by now we'd get some relief from this weather. No way. Look at the birds fighting over these seeds. Anyway, we got a long day ahead of us in the shop. A lot of sanding. A nice hot cup of coffee and uh, that pond is almost frozen shut this morning. So we're really using this real cold weather to our advantage. And hey, it was really great seeing Joe the other day. And now with Joe fully retired, I'm sure he's going to be up here even more and we're going to have some enjoyable photo sessions, fly-in sessions, and we're going to be making him up that cowl pretty soon, as soon as he finishes the mold. Now we gave another coat of silver to this, sanded it out, and we are working up toward having, I guess, uh, some reasonably nice crisp corners on these fillets. Crisp corners in where the canopy edges. We made a pattern up out of tin foil of what I hope is going to be the, uh, well, Les and I will discuss it more and we'll try some more different shapes. Another area that needed a lot of work, the back of the uh, the grating and the back section that's still I'm not still still not satisfied with that that's going to need a couple of more silver primer sand out cycles the wing finally finally after a, a thousand repairs I I'm kind of satisfied with the way that the wing tip looks the stab looks like it's pretty much ready to go the elevators and flaps look ready to go they look like they're ready for a coat of red paint Dave Midgley and Rich Oliver are working on some test decals that we'll have early next week. And we really have one part left that needs a lot of work. Now we've made a lot of, this has been sitting up by the heating vent for a couple of days. Let me pull this down. And I'll work on this as the primary thing today. We, we worked on getting this scoop in, worked on getting the surface the way we wanted to. Had to reinforce the part with some sea grain wood because I was just getting nervous that this was just too vulnerable. And what I'm going to do, and I'll do some of this off camera of course, and this is all going to have to be wet sanded out. I already got the water out. Wet sand this back down. Maybe one more coat of primer and a coat of silver and this will be ready to go. But the point is, when, and we've got some little spots, little fingernail marks and things that have to be fixed. What I like to do in any day like today, where I know I have uh, a gap of time, but certainly not unlimited time, take the part that needs the most dry cycles, which is this part, spend as much time necessary to get it down to where it's sanded down, and then decide if, it's, if it needs a coat of clear and silver, a coat of primer, clear silver, or just a coat of silver. And I won't know until that part is totally sanded down. But again, from this point on, and this part really is not a problem because there isn't, except for the little edges, there isn't any wood or that, the little reinforcements, which are not a problem. We really don't have to deal with uh, worrying if a little bit of water got on the wood. But even though we do that, we just try to keep it as dry as possible during the sand out. I'm almost done and I'm just trying to get into some of these areas that it's really difficult to get into. Get the details and the corners done because we've been blessed. It's actually, the day started out with 60 mile an hour winds and it's calmed down enough that I'll be able to get out there and get some painting done before the day ends. I'd like to get a coat of silver on this just to put it aside to dry and get a look at it. And then I wanted to, I wanted to basically uh, see if I could 
do another layout on the cockpit look at some of the choices we have but first I want to get some silver on this get this up by the heating vent to dry that Brodak primer when it when you sand it out wet just sands right out really nice the trick is not to use more of it than you think you need well this is the kind of, the kind of winter it's been and I think it's actually up from look to look at the ice chunks in the pond what it looks like we might even be above freezing can you imagine the luxury of having it above freezing when you're ready to paint your plane and you can <laughs> you can hear the wind chimes in the background romantic but not while you're painting anyway the idea will be to get a Hopefully get a coat on. Now what I can see already is there's going to be a lot of dry spots on this. So I'm going to put on a coat, wait about 10 minutes, put a second coat right on top of it. Now I can see... There's a lot of spots on here. This may even need another coat of primer or clear. I see a lot of little touch-up spots, a lot of spots I want to put more material on. Oh, well, that silver is drying up. I wanted to lay out some more tape, get some more, look at some more possibilities of shapes. But you're really limited here because there's so many things different than, than actually doing the car, but, but we have a lot of tape. Now it's pretty obvious right from Les's plans, what I wanted to do tonight, I wanted to lay out as accurately as I could and of course this is difficult because I I had worked off a center line and then tried to mirror image it but I this is pretty much a copy of what Les has and it's just one of the choices that I want to have as we lay this out well it's it's pretty uh, obvious we're not going to be able to copy that window shape on the car but we want to get something that has the same look, the same image. And I think Les got it pretty right on the plans, right on the first time he did the plans, right on that, that initial thing. But I'm going to be moving this tape around. Now the idea of laying this out is, this is the outline. And what I would do is when I get the real eighth inch tape that's going to back mask this, I'll lay it inside this pattern. But for right now, this gives me a really... Uh, well, an, an intricate view of what that might look like if I laid it out. But again, I'm going to be going back and forth with this. This is just just actually to uh, for exercise more than anything else. And just to see what this might look like once we get the canopy finalized and ready to be, ma be back masked. What's very interesting to me about laying this out is even if you move the tape as an example this front curve you just change that front curve just a little bit well what I'm trying to do of course is get it close to the plan but even the, the most subtle change really changes the whole look just changing one or two little angles on this really changes the look and what I'm doing I'm just I'm, I'm trying to separate this and figure out well, what curves and angles I like and which ones I don't like. But it's, uh, <laughs> it's interesting doing this. Maybe from certain angles, it has the look of an arrow. I'm trying to picture what it would look like from the top. It, ha it, ab it absolutely looks a lot like the, uh, the hydroplane racers, the drag boats that they show on Speed Vision uh, during the boat races. Anyway. We are going to play 
And this is, this is just really an exercise. An exercise in masking tape. Just so I have something to dream about tonight. Okay, now today what I wanted to do, because I got a little bit of time in between chopping ice and everything, what I do, I take some of this, the red lead, and I just put a drop of thinner in it. Because what I need to do, I'm picking away now. Now these are not really big problems, but I want to show. If you look right down in there, there's a little bit of a spot. It's a little tiny spot. And these are just... Well, last night when I played with that canopy, I'm not sure I got it the way I want it. I'll wait for Les to uh, get some feedback on it. But today we can get a little bit of this touch-up. And I needed to make a tool. I cut one of those rubber trowels up. Because everything on this project has to be specially made. In fact, this is too thick. So I may as well show what I did. This isn't, this is too big. And you could take these, these are the little uh, Brodac cells, these, they're made by SIG, but you can get them in body shops. And I need to cut them into little tiny pieces. And I thought one of the things on this project we could at least look at is some different ways of doing these little body, sh body shop touch-ups. I can get in there and get that. And believe me, nobody's going to see this, but I'll see it. Joe Adamusco is going to see it. Les will see it. And you can really, th this is an infinite thing. You can infinitely pick away at this until you're happy. And that's always the key to all this stuff is when you're happy. And from looking at Joe's plane, I can tell he's picked away at it because no matter how you build a plane it's never perfect when you build it it's the fixing of the little errors that adds up into being something really special now here's another little spot up here again a lot of a lot of what I'm learning about as I'm making this plane is making these special little tools and how to make them. Oh, there's another one over here. But if you enjoy that part of it, the part of what we do of making things as nice as possible, and every time I see Joe's handiwork up front, I'm inspired. I want to run home and see if I can do, you know, like have our own little private competition. Now this looks like, this looks like maybe we'll get a bunch of these little touch-ups done. See, I don't want to take the tape off the canopy. In fact, I'm going to go get some of that green tape today and back mask it so that I can respray this later today or tomorrow or whatever. Oh, that looks nice. There's still little spots that bother me, though. And I know eventually I'll get them all. The trick with this material is never use big giant amounts because it has no strength. Just tiny little areas and you'd be amazed when you pick up little areas like this. You, it's infinite. You could be doing this forever. In fact, here's one down here. Now, as this stays out like this, you just add one drop of thinner to it. Otherwise, you have to keep mixing more and more. A little spot right down there. This is a dry spot here, I see. But getting at, getting to just where you can pick out the little imperfections. A major thing toward getting getting this to be as nice as possible. Now I can put that up by the heating vent later to dry. This part I've already sanded out. This part had some real imperfections in it. Back here, this had some real nasty little dots and fingernail marks and we're, we're closing in on having this but I'll be a lot happier when we get a couple more coats of silver and a couple more coats of primer on this but this is the point is this part of it this could go on for months 
you've got to reach a level, or I have to reach a level, where, where I'm happy with it. And then when that last coat of silver goes on, I want to sand everything back down and put on an ultra-thin coat of silver just to use as a blocker coat. Now even this little part, as long as I have a little bit of this material out here, a couple of places where I w hit this with the sanding block, Any little spot on here that I'm not happy with. Now as we're picking away at these parts, here's another issue. I'm looking around. Let's see, we got one right here. Early on, right while you're in silver, you can pick away at little spots. Right here is a spot where we don't have good paint adhesion down there. So what I do is take a number 11 blade, put a hundred little holes in it, put a bunch of little holes in it. On a tiny amount of thin CA, just rub that right in. Anything that's not adhering real well, I want to put little tiny holes in it, hit it with thin CA. Press it down with Q-tips. This way you don't wind up with things that later on in the finish are going to start to bubble up. Now I see a little spot here I'm not happy with. Here's the same simple answer here. If I take, let me do this. This is a spot where it looks like it's, I call it soft. So you just take a million little pinholes in there. And you can usually see where it's soft. Since we're still going to be sanding this out and spraying more silver as days go by and just turn it into a big pin cushion now what this does this lets it be hard and then when it's hard you can make progress as you don't get it bubbling up on you and now that's ready to be once that and that cures real quickly Once that's done, take any one of our, and I don't know which sanding tool is going to be the appropriate one here, any one of the sanding tools that'll fit in there. And the thing with any of these high quality finishes, it's just going back and forth, back and forth, and not being satisfied. Once you're satisfied, you bring it up to the level you're going to be happy with, but if you're not happy, sand out the silver, pick away at the mistakes, do it over again, and you do it as many times as you want. As long as you sand off the material that you've put on. Now, once that's re-silvered, that'll be a lot better than having that imperfection there. And we'll have to get our little sanding tool and get in here at all the little spots that is another example of one you can see right here where the fillet is not adhering real well. And if you look at it, let's see, you can see that it's just a bubble. In essence, it's just a bubble. But because the CA is capillary, CA is a wonderful material in terms of making bubbles go away. You can just run that down the whole edge. Anywhere that you think. In fact, I, I see that that's not real good. So what I'll do is I'll just go down the whole fillet. Because I'm going to re-sand this out anyway. Just use a brand new number 11 blade. Once that's done, let's get another. And once that's sanded back out and re-silvered, you would think or hope that each time you do that it's going to get better because you're not going to have these little bubbles that later on in the finish develop into big bubbles. Right here we're missing a little spot of adhesion. And if you just, fo <coughs> just follow through, this is what I'm going to be doing for the next couple of days is just, I call it picking away at the parts. 
bubbles are a real downer. Bubbles can really be a problem because they don't go away. Wherever the material isn't nailed down, it just keeps getting worse and worse. And then when you put the model out in the sun, then of course you get boop. So I'm gonna pick away. I've got plenty of time today. I'm gonna to pick away, resand out all of these, well, as much as I can. But and I want to bring it up to a level where I'm gonna be happy with it. Right now I'm I'm certainly not happy. I want it to be better. Now believe it or not, <laughs> it's up over 30 degrees today. I actually see liquid instead of ice. But what I wanted to do now, because we're getting down to the home stretch on this, I want to put on very, very thin coats of silver. So what I'm going to do from this point on is I just put it in the airbrush, of course. And what this does, it allows me to get a real nice thin coat. And once I'm satisfied by putting thin coats on, once I get to the end and I'm satisfied, then that can just be the last coat. And that's, that's as easy as that can be. Well, it will be a pleasure when this winter is over. We have really suffered through some nasty weather. Anyway, you can see all the body work and all the things that had to be taken care of on the bottom. Now these thin coats of silver really are just going to act as a blocker coat because we're not using this underneath the, the Ferrari Red. Look at the wind blowing. Listen to those wind chimes. We listen to them all night long, too, believe me. What this allows you to do, too, as you airbrush on, is when you see a little dry spot, you can just get pinpointed. You don't wind up on the edges, always on the edges and in the fillets. You don't wind up with a ton of extra paint. And it's real easy, even at this point in time, to just start adding coat after coat after coat and decoupaging everything up. And usually that's when that perfectly good plane that you've worked on for uh, hundreds of hours, you put it on a scale and it's just a little heavier than you thought it would be. In fact, when I get on a scale, I'm a little heavier than I thought I should be. Anyway, this allows us to just get on a, a very, very thin, thin coat. That's all we need now from this point on is blocker coats. If I wanted a heavier coat, I could use the, uh, the smaller water gun, but for right now this will be fine. And I'll get the fuse, in by the strakes, I got that, those little areas touched up, I can get right in by the strakes without repainting the whole part. It'll be very convenient. Now, it's also okay right now to look around any dry spots, and I see a dry spot right on the back of the fillet. Well, once this dries up a couple of seconds, yeah, I got a lot of control with an airbrush. There's a little dry spot up here. But what I'm not doing is just blowing big, heavy coats of paint on everything. Edges, never get hurt painting the edges an extra time. They always seem to want to pick up the back. Now, had we put this coat on with the smaller water gun, we'd probably have two or three times as much paint on here. But we're not going to—we're not going to hopefully be sanding all of this off. And if we're happy with this, this can actually be the uh, maybe even the last coat. Who knows? But I'm looking for those dry spots, and it takes about 30 seconds after you put the dope down to see them come through. In the fillet areas, the airbrush is nice to get in the fillet areas. And here we got a dry area. It can be very selective when you airbrush. What's nice about this too, it lets us really be selective when I'm getting in these strake areas.
Now where I know I'm going to have to sand this out again, where I have touch-ups to do and body work to do, then I would be inclined to want to use the, uh, the smaller water gun just to get more material on there. And we have really taken advantage of a day. I didn't know it was going to be this <laughs> this warm. It's like it's like it's uh, 31 degrees or something. Like that. But we've really played the weather pretty well in the last couple of weeks. Now this part I know is going to need at least one more sand out there. The little flaws in it, little areas where I need to work on it. some extra on the edges, give us a little extra sand off on the next sand out. And I remember when this part was just a, a figment of less than its imagination, that's quite a lot of hours went into this. Now we're in for a real treat this morning. The weather's supposed to warm up to <laughs> They said up to 30 today. I'll believe it when I see it. I can always tell early in the morning when the birds are real hungry. I know it's going to be cold today. The poor, these poor guys starve all winter. Anyway, as the last of this snowstorm melts away and we're down to having almost nothing, what we're, what we're trying to get a gauge on is I want to get less to finalize this canopy shape today. And we're, we're on the verge of getting ready to start spraying some test red. Some of the Bob Brookins paint that he uh, graciously got the pigments for us. We're going to mix it with Brodac Clear. And we're not going to spray it until we get a little, bit, a little bit better day. But I'd like to get a little test done today, maybe. Now, one of the things I wanted to do today, and this is the kind of thing that a lot of times you tend to skip over. I was out yesterday and I, I stopped at the body shop supply and bought one roll of every brand of tape that he had in stock. Now this is what they call general masking tape and if you look at on the on each 3M tape anyway it lists what the tackiness is. This has some uses in doing a trim job. The stuff that we like to do when we're going to do a final tape edge is the green and of course where's the uh, the tackiness factor, or whatever you want to call it on here. It's on here somewhere. I don't have my glasses on yet. Anyway, this is certainly tackier than the blue, which is, and then there's another brand, and I, he convinced me to try this. It's called Tartan. I'm not sure. I, what, whatever I don't use on this project, I'll certainly, uh, <laughs> you know, find some other, you know, use for it. But... But what I've figured out over the years is the blue tape is nice. When you want to put tape on, take it off. Put tape on, take it off. Because it's, it's a very low tack tape. This tape, when you put it on, it tends to be a little stickier. And if you have fresh paint, it's a good idea. I, I made sure I have a clean shirt this morning. I haven't used it four or five days and been it's all full of dirt and everything because I'm going to be rubbing tape on my shirt to put on the, on the ship. Now... I'm going to have to strip some of this down because I want to use thinner. I want to make some eighth inch tape out of the green tape. But the first thing I'm going to do is a test, just a general test on these. And this is kind of easy to do. I usually can do it without even doing a test. I just can do it on my hand and figure it out. You open up a roll of this tape. Now a lot of people years ago, and maybe even they still do, and I don't know it, they just stopped calling is they'd go buy some of this masking tape that you'd buy at body shops years ago they only had really a few brands and they'd take it and you take this brand new tape you put it on and it'd pull the paint right up every time well a trick if you feel and you could feel with your hand if it's really sticky get a brand new clean flannel shirt now that's ready now you can put it down on a model and it doesn't hurt anything and you can even pull it right up and whoop without pulling the paint up. But the trick is rub it on your shirt once and that's always a good trick if you have sticky tape. Now this brand, and again, a lot of times I go down there, the fellow that I know down at Chard, by the way, 
is a DuPont representative who always gives me some, I think, interesting information about what's coming up in the world of paint. They've pretty much outlawed anything lacquer in the state of Jersey, so if I was dependent on them for supplies, uh, I might be in trouble. But we always have Bobby Brookins. Now, this tape, and I can feel this with my bare hands. You don't need to rub this on your shirt. This is almost like drafting tape. You can put that right on, take it right off. It's not a problem. So this is a low-tack tape. But the one that I know works almost every time, and it's always a good idea. Here's another thing with tape. Fresh tape. If you put tape away for a year or so, then and it's in a damp area or a place where it gets hot and cold, hot and cold, that tackiness factor can change. And it usually... When this glue changes, it usually gets more sticky. It doesn't get less sticky. I don't know what the chemical reason for that is, but or that's at least what it seems like. Now, the green tape has always been, you take it, there's an amount of stickiness, and I don't know what it is. The, it's not as tacky as this. This, ha, this is paint puller. The green seems to be good in a lot of ways. That If I'm going to put it on a, a model, now, another trick is to just strip this down into eighth inch strips and do the edge of your trim with the real sticky tape. And then the less sticky, where's that white roll? This stuff, which, which normally you'd call drafting tape, the less sticky tape, or you can make patterns out of tin foil. Now what I did when Les was, Les was masking us, that kind of made a pattern out of tin foil just to look at the shape. Or Now what I'm gonna try to do I'm going to strip off some eighth inch green tape and I'm going to go around the bottom of this canopy and then I'll be able to take out I'll be able to see if I like it a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller but but I want to do it in green tape because once I put that tape down I might want to keep it I don't know but then when I get this finished I want where I'm happy with it then what I want to do is have less look at it and from the artist's point of view get an idea if he's happy with it now I'm kind of I put a lot of hours into this that you didn't even see. To get the shape, it kind of looks like a, uh, a hydroplane racer. You really can't make a windshield here and, and put windshield wipers on it. So, But I'm kind of happy with it. And it's very close to what Les had on a drawing. So I'm going to see if he likes it when he gets here. In the meantime, I'll strip off some of this tape and just see if I like this. I can put a, a piece inside and a piece outside and see if I like it bigger or smaller without making too much of a commitment. Now when you want to strip some of this tape down, this serves two purposes when you strip tape this way. First off, it gets rid of that, that real tackiness. And what I try to do is make them about 15 inches long. It's not, not real important. That's how long it would be the, the pieces that I anticipate I'll need. Now, it's pretty easy to do this and figure out if you want any infinite amount of tenths, two tenths, or whatever. In our case, well, I got the wrong side of the ruler. What I can do is just lay out where roughly eighth inch would be. Now, you can buy a lot of different tapes that are already stripped to eighth inch, but what this allows you to do, and I think it's a significant thing, is you can alter it if you want a little more than an eighth, a little less than an eighth, you want a tenth, you can infinitely vary it. Now, of course, when you do this, one of the things that's to keep in mind is you cannot use, or the, the first part, the first piece that you cut off is usually not going to be okay. So what I do, I tape the ruler down, because I don't really have a helper here today, or right now anyway. I can lay this first piece out. Now I don't need to worry about the ruler. A lot of times you don't want to do this is have your finger sticking out over it and you cut the tip of your finger off here. Anyway, and I can strip this off. And what it is, I get rid of the first piece of tape. Because that may not be exactly straight. This may not be exactly what I want. Now, from this point on, you would hope I can pick this up, go to the next line, and have a pretty good shot at having... And I can cut as many strips as I think I'm going to need to do this job. 
So, but I can, the thing that's nice is I can cut it infinitely. I don't have to cut, when I have eighth inch or quarter inch, what happens? It kind of limits what you can do in the paint job. When you have this, you can infinitely vary it. So you can create all kind of special effects, little stripes around things that are thicker, thinner. You know, what this allows me to do is look at, for instance, I want to make this an eighth of an inch longer, maybe. I can look at these changes before I actually and I've done this of course before but I just keep fine-tuning this and every time I look at it from different angles I want to make sure that it's what I want because once I lay it out in tape I'm stuck with it and once I'm kinda of satisfied and I just want to see what this is gonna look like once this is blocked in the easiest way I know of to back mask this and the idea is to get the minimum amount of tape touching the airplane I don't want to just black this out with tape. I'm being real careful for a lot of reasons. First off, the paint is only a couple of days old, so it's still vulnerable. And any little fingernail mark, if, if you were to just crush this, squeeze it with your hand, you'll leave little marks in here. Another thing, too, I learned a long time ago, you can't, I can't anyway, when you paint the canopy first and then you go to back mask it, the pearl picks up the tape, the little imperfections in the tape. So I'd rather do this first, if possible. So what I'm trying to do is I've made, I've pressed this down, and I think you can see the impression right here. The tape leaves an impression of exactly what the pattern is. So now I have a real good chance at, I just want to expose about an eighth of an inch. Again, the less you could expose, the better when I back mask it. I can see that that's going to be okay. I don't want to get, I don't want to make this any more difficult than it has to be. Again, the whole idea, in a perfect world, you would only expose about an eighth of an inch of tape, and that would be real nice, of course. So I can work my way around this whole pattern here. And whether it's a Testarossa or a B25, doesn't matter, this technique works well. Now I can cut along this area. I'm going to be real careful so I can get as much tin foil and as little tape as possible. Use that for the other side. Now this kind of conforms to the shape. You can see how little tape it actually be working up there. So now I can back this up. Again, always rubbing it on my shirt. I'm trying not to press down any more than I have to. I need to seal up the back. Now there's always another trick of taping that works well. Whenever you have to go into a corner like this, make the piece bigger than you have to. And take a brand new blade and put it right in the corner. In this case we need to come up, but work off the corners. and it gives you a nice neat edge to work off. Now all I have to do is just repeat the same thing on the other side and I'll have the whole part back masked off but the only place I have tape touch and paint is maybe an eighth of an inch in. Now once it's all masked off then I can put masking tape on top of the tin foil. What that's going to allow me to do is look at it from far away and see if it's symmetrical. It just gives me another way of looking at it or if I wanted to I could put blue tape over it or anything just so I can see the shape and see how that's going to blend into the strakes and to the whole the whole overview of the model.
Now the hard part is always to look at it from several different angles. The top being one, like a koi show, where that's going to be the angle you see most of all. Make a decision. But of course it's Les's decision that I want to hear about, hear from. But even so, what this gives us using this tape method, what this gives us a choice to do is we can go around this whole outline with another layer of tape and then move. If, in other words, we want to move this line down, move this line back. Once we have our square one, and we know that's done with a pattern, so it's pretty equal, probably within a 64th equal. But, but looking at it, nothing beats just looking at it from a lot of different angles. Anyway, the next step is, of course, just going to be uh, get feedback from Les. In the meantime, I can think about it, look at it, put it up on a table with the other parts, and just... It's funny how something you look at early in the morning, maybe by the afternoon you want to change it, but, but now we're at least able to always go back to square one real easily. Now, it's going to be an endless thing here, the next couple of days of touching up little spots, and I think there still are some. I still want to sand the whole wing out one more time. I want to go over it. And actually, to, by watching the weather, this, this finally is something I can live with. What I really want to do is, by the end of the week, hopefully we're going to have some warm weather, and be able to lay on some of the red paint on some of the smaller parts just to see if we're happy with the color and if it matches that mirror and whatever whatever and uh, thank Bobby Brookins for all his help getting us the correct paint we went back and forth a few times in the mail and he assures me that pigment I have is what they call for what Ferrari calls for and he's a he's a professional body man so if it's wrong <laughs> it'll be Ferrari's fault now, with a little bit of time I got here, I figured I'd get some of this sanded out today. There's still a lot of little detailing to be done down in here with the sticks, the little pieces of sandpaper. I need to finalize the little fillet fit up here. And then what I want to do as the last step, once all that detailing's done, I want to get this total coat of silver sanded out with 600. I just hope this is going to be the last coat, and it looks it looks like I probably could cheat and not sand this out and just leave it, but you know what, I don't want to take a, like a compromise here and maybe take one chance out of a hundred that that's not going to be the case. It only take a couple hours to get this all sanded, and I think as the final, well, what that allows me to do is get a total blend where we repaired the tip and where this area is because there's extra finish up here. Get it really, it could probably remove a little bit of weight too, but it'll get a nice blend because in the final fit, this wing being composite should have a real nice reflective quality when it's done. It shouldn't have any or a minimum of the little ripples and things that make you crazy on a, uh, you know, on a D-tube wing. Now oh, another little tool I found real handy, I took one of these little, the trowels and sticky back paper just to cut away at the bad spots and what that does, it gives you a real razor edge to work with and down here in these fillet grooves, this has really made it, actually I should have had this when I did the, the original assembly of this. Because by the end of this project, I hope we've worked out all the kinks of making strakes. The reason being, we may want to make another ship with some kind of strakes, some kind of strakes in the cowling, and figuring out how to do it the easiest way and the best way would be part of what I'd like to get out of this project. And once that corner is done, then I can go to the square tool that has the sandpaper stuck right to it. Get right in that angle and edge, and you can see how quickly it just picks up the high spots. And the wing I can sand out wet, that won't be a problem. 
Later on in the, way, in the week, it's supposed to go to 40 and 50 degrees. If it does, I'd like to have the option of uh, having some of these parts ready to put some red paint on as we close in on the silver. And to me, this is the most exciting time of building a plane. Is it really starts to look like a plane, and every day it looks a little bit nicer. Now, this little edge here we could work on. And the thing that's different is right now you can spend endless, endless amounts of time. You can, you could spend a year doing this, and you do it to the level that you're happy with. Now, the only option you don't have is the option that a lot of people want, is they don't want to spend the time, but they want to have a finish, you know, a super high quality concourse finish, whatever. Well, there's almost a balance. The amount of time you're willing to spend, the amount of energy, and the quality to finish. It's, it, it really, I, I wish I could find a shortcut. I wish I could find one of these. Just take a mop and slap it on and it'll look beautiful. And you know, over the years, I've had probably a hundred people call me and say, oh, I'm going to use this certain, certain finish. It's better than dope. Oh, my God, you just well, mop it on and do this. and da -da. It's either always too heavy or there's always some other problem that somewhere in the scheme of things you didn't really realize. And in fact, like when we were doing Imran finishes, yeah, the Imran would dry and you'd save time buffing it out and everything, and then you'd go way to plane. Ugh! And it'd be way too heavy. Then also, the plane is always tail heavy. So here you are with these giant nose weights, and you keep thinking, now, how much time did I really save here? A couple hours here, a couple hours there? Well, and all you have to do to really convince yourself that I'm right, just look at Joe Adamusco's plane. Look at it as, it's as flawless as anything you can imagine. And, and it's not too heavy. How many flawless planes do you see? Uh, that they're 10 ounces too heavy, or way too heavy, or tail heavy, or the CG is wrong, or something else that just makes you crazy. After all this work, you just get stuck, and you can't do much about it. After that time, it's way too late. Anyway, we'll detail this out, and just hope this weather is going to break real soon. I'm getting sick of looking at ice on that pond. I'm just going to see how much of this I can get sanded out and and hope for that weather change. It's that weather that, that's right now the, the thing that's holding up production here. Now this is the point at which having these little tools with the little point and this the whole philosophy of endless detailing really pays off because right now the silver really is showing me little spots that before this actually dried up, I was not unaware of, and a couple of them are right up in this area right here. And if the problem is, once you're done with the silver and you put on, in this case it's going to be the red, you really can't reasonably go back and fix these things for a couple of reasons. Number one, you don't really see them. Once this is painted, especially if it's painted white, these, these flaws would not show up. Now, you might be thinking, well, you know, that's cool. Let's just paint everything white and nobody will know anything. Well, up to a point. But they're real good quality people. Just like the people in quality motorcycle shows and car shows, if they see a black car, for instance, the bodywork looks so reflective. And in this case, the red, I'm sure, is going to be reflective. It's going to show every little mistake. Now, even to the point of, if you look in here, you see I've got... I don't know if you can see this. I've got a couple little spots even in here. Just little fingernail marks and little things that I'm endlessly working on this. And actually what I've decided to do is kind of work on it and grind it and sand on it and detail it until, until we actually get a good spray in day because I really don't want to compromise and be trying to spray while we have 40 mile an hour winds and 18 degree weather. But that extra time is allowing me to really detail out parts so that when these parts are all shiny and reflective, I think they're really going to look a lot nicer than if I had, if it were 70 degrees out there now, I'd be running outside to paint maybe. Maybe I'd, uh, even I'd have trouble avoiding the temptation. Now there's a couple of tricks that, that may be useful to you. At, we know we have a lot of body work on this tip, a lot of, a lot of little 
times we've sanded it out and tried to make it better and better and better. Well now, the, the objective here was to let it dry out as long as possible by a heating vent, so it's kind of hardened up and solidified, I hope. And now the trick is, and it's very tempting to over sand this. I just want to sand it till I start to see. I'll, in fact, I'll even to the point of just leaving a little extra material on here. I don't want to over sand it. No, I'm coming through already. Be for the simple reason, the last coat of silver that I'm going to put on here, I'm going to try to put it on really, really thin. Just either, either with the airbrush with about 15 pounds of pressure and just dust it on, or with, or with, uh, I mean with the Iwata gun, or with the airbrush, depending on how much I'm going to need to cover this up. Now, if I leave a little bit of the silver on like this, I'll need the minimum coat. But what happens out here, I have 10 coats of silver. Out here, I have one. And all I'm trying to do is get that perpetual, endless blend. So in the final coat of paint, you'll, you'll not see where these repairs were had taken place and blending it in is really just a hit or miss thing until you get it right and and I can usually do that with my hand and feel where it feels about right and as soon as I see that I'm running out of silver and I'm down into the substrate that's as far as I can go on that part of the wing and the rest of it would be this is the only real repair on the whole wing the rest of it ought to be pretty cut and dry Okay, just sand it out relatively nicely. We're going to be ready for, as soon as we get some uh, paintable weather, get another coat of silver on this. All right, that takes care of that. What are you going to do, make up some radiuses, radii, no, one, radiuses? One radii. Radiuses? One radi, radi, one. The so only reason I do this when is... When it's round, it looks like a smoothie. Yeah, but you don't have, no, the smoothie is, is real big. You don't have a point here. That's what I like about it. The same as the, as the plane doesn't have a point on both ends. If, where's that tail ass end? Hmm? That angle on the back end. Yeah. This angle matches the back piece, the little grill. Oh, okay. Enough said. So much for experimentation. I thought what you wanted to do is put a radius on it where the, where the canopy comes to a point. In the back. No. That's no. how you had the plans drawn, but it, when I did it with the radius, it looked like this point, because everything on this thing is nasty, like the rudder, right. where you have that nasty point on a rudder. Right. Now, the other point here is uh, I don't know, no matter how you look at it, that looks good to me. Yeah. To I me, agree. that looks. I it agree. looks balanced, and when I made it thinner, I had made it thinner, it looked you mean like a squinting Chinaman. Like this? Yeah, no, when I made this, I had this laid oh, out, oh, oh, okay. and I made it an eighth inch bigger and an eighth inch smaller, and it was right there, and then I went to the pattern, and it was right off your plan. All right. It isn't, it, and here's what's important. When you get the side view, the top just disappears. See how the top just disappears? Yep. You'll just, in, in other words, if you bring this down, then it starts to look like a smoothie, and you yeah, see right. that. No, I Where agree. this will be nice when it's all fogged in and everything. Oh, yeah. That'll be real. I think it'll be nice anyway. No, I agree with it. I like it. That, But but it's that angle. I don't know. When you put it all together, that angle kind of marries to that angle. Yep. Oh, yeah. There no two ways about it. No. But I just couldn't remember you tapering that down. I remembered right, I re what you did in the bottom of the fuse yep. with the holes coming out. And boy, is it. Flip it over and look at the bottom when you stand behind it. Oh, yeah. That I think that adds a lot to the design. Sure does. Sure does. That really came out nice. Well, it looks like we have a paintable day. We're certainly going to find out. And what I did, I wiped this whole thing down with M600, the little bit that I have left, and that's going to be a dwindling supply. What I'm trying to do is kit all the areas where I've gone all the way through, so those are the low spots. Leading edge, always vulnerable. Less if you like, does Ann like dogs? Oh yeah. I took Karen to see Eight Below yesterday. Yeah. Oh my God, you want to go out and buy a dog when you come home. 
What a great movie. That's as good as the Penguin movie. Unbelievably good. The movie that we want to see is uh, 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 the comedy with uh, uh, Cluso. What the heck am I trying to remember? Pink Panther, the, new, the latest Pink Panther movie. Oh, oh, oh. Because we saw some previews to that, and it, all the sight gags and everything looks just yeah. hilarious. Now, before I do, go to put the coat of silver on the way I want, I'm just trying to, look at this thing dripping already. I'm trying to get all the edges twice. Just to cover up, especially along that leading edge. That's where the paint wears out first. That yeah, where the bottom dynamite. block is. Okay, now let me grab it this way. All right. I want it to get along the trailing edge needed. What an amazing day, huh? Who would have thought this day was going to be like this? And they said by the weekend it's going to be nice. My biggest fear is Friday's supposed to be really nice. The phone's going to be ringing off the hook. Sir. Yeah, you're going to be doing gun lessons all day. Oh well. It's the price of being a Corvette owner. Okay, now I can just go about just putting on a thin coat of silver over everything from this point on. This is the Especially spot on the tip stuff. This is where the body work was. I wanted to see that this isn't going to get too ratty. A little extra on there. A little extra on the leading edge. A little extra up here by the fuselage. That wasn't real nice there before. I see that Joe Adamusco used a slider for his lead out guides. Yeah. A nice installation, boy. That's, yeah. the, that's the thinnest slot I've ever seen to get to a. Well, you have to, to do that on a on a uh, elliptical wing. It's a real, it's a little bit of a a funky thing. Okay, what I'm going to do now is just let these dry up for a few minutes, and then go over the whole thing, the whole thing with a new coat of silver. Hope we've seen the last of this ice and snow today. Everything looks like it's melting up. <laughs> Let's hope it's the last one. Snow, go to Ken Clapson's house. Well, that wing is drying up in its splendid state of silver. The artist is creating artwork what here. What happened here? Those are decals. Walt Russell made these up. Yeah, but I, what we could really use is some more of those. Well, we'll get that, we'll get more. That's the right size. That looks like that's about the right exactly size the right, for right size. about here. Well, look at where it is on the. You got the picture of the car. You got the thing over on my desk. Bring that picture over. Yeah, but on the on the Testarossa, they don't put side badging. They do not put. Side this badging. looks like if if it looks like it's the right size. This is why I like to go to the competition cars, because on the competition cars they put size side badging. That looks too big. See, that one looks but large. But that's on a Formula One car. Yeah, that's, that's more like it. This even looks big. How big is this? Did you measure this with a ruler? No. This, Not yet. this looks right to me. This, this is about, right. I would have to say, this is a little bit, this is about 60% of this one. The only reason I cut this one out is this one fits so well right there. I think it looks better on the nose. And I thought you're gonna. Uh, where's the other one? Oh, these are way too big. These Ferrari things are way too big. Oh yeah, these are. There, that's ridiculous. That turns it into a cardinal. Or maybe on the wing, this would look okay. But on a fuselage, I don't think you put the badging on the wing. You can't get this off. This no. is stuck. Yeah. Let's see. Maybe we gotta heat it. Don't put this on the silver paint. Whatever you do, this will take it right off. Let's see what it looks like on a drone. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Richard's sending decals. They're already in a mail, so we'll see what he's got. And Elliot's got this scanned into his computer, some kind of high resolution thing. That looks a little on the big side. But what's this? Relative to but but that would be okay. I think that's where it looks cool as can be. That looks like the way some of the Ferraris have it, right up on the nose. 
Now, we got to come up with lettering here that says E-N-Z-O, some kind of lettering. Well, you got a typeface here. Elliot's got the typeface on his computer, some fancy typeface that matches everything. He was going to print it out for me. Here it is right here. See, it's all lowercase, Testarossa. Yeah, that, well, John Pothy already put that in the computer. I've got that to lay out on a wing. There's a, there's a typical Ferrari. Now the that square, is, I think, is, yeah. yeah, but the, the, the Ferrari logo, uppercase well, F and then it logo. ends in the I. Yeah, we got that logo somewhere in there. You got it right in here. See what, what Walt did with these. These are relatively low resolution and the color yellow isn't yeah, right. right. But it's this, see how much different, you know, the printers print different. This is the right color, I think. <laughs> Well, we're going to find out when we get the stuff from Richard, that's for sure. Now, Les had one of his really good ideas here. We didn't try it yet, but, you know, from working on this and handling it, what's happened is anytime you have a plane where there's a, a corner or an edge, this is vulnerable. And this is relatively soft wood, and right there we got a little bit of a ding in it, you can see. But it, we were thinking of, well, he was thinking of, and it's a good idea, if you along the construction time we should have made two little like booties with this bubble wrap and put them on each end whichever end we weren't working on just to avoid dinging it and zinging it and everything else that we've been doing to it but anyway this was really a productive day and that coat of silver is is looking as good as I've ever envisioned it that is really looking good so now the decals have already left Texas the test decals That'll be one thing. Les is laying out Ferrari emblems. I've got a little more work to do on this. Maybe one more coat of silver. There's still a couple of spots here I'm not crazy about. But one more sand out, or if tomorrow is a paintable day, I'll try to get some of that done. So that to pretty much everything will all be in silver at one point in time. And when that point in time comes, then we'll be ready to mix some red paint. But we still have to make a decision on those decals when they get here. Now in today's mail, got some more DVDs from Frank Carlisle. We've seen his other, uh, sent two so far. These are two new ones. And again, I don't know that the original note I got from Frank was that he was not looking to sell these. But for people that are interested in electric, they may be able to uh, convince him to swap a pair or sell a pair. He's got $15 on here, but... Again, I don't know if that's changed. Interesting stuff. If you're interested in electrics, this is Frank's address. Of course, he's a Pampa member. You can get a hold of him through Pampa. Now, the first couple of DVDs when I watched them, I haven't reviewed these yet. I'm going to watch them as soon as I'm caught up on DVD orders. But, but they had some nice flying sequences. And this is supposed to be, uh, well, once we get that, we'll, we'll probably put some more on here. I was just excited about getting some new stuff because I've been selling the electric timers and we have literally sold hundreds of them. So I know there's a growing interest in electric and anybody that's going to take the time to put the stuff on DVD and make it available to other people, I sure want to help them in every way I can to make every part of model aviation grow, whether it's electric glow or whatever. And We've sent Frank our DVDs. We're going to keep him in a loop. I hope he'll keep us in a loop in the future. And we'll, in the next week or so, we'll get a chance to review these, look them over, and uh, I'll put some more information on there. Now, I just got a phone call from Dave, too. Dave's told me tomorrow, tomorrow, I will be receiving some decals to test in the mail. Well, that'll give me something to think about tonight, that's for sure. And among other things that, uh, can you imagine how easy, I'm just thinking here, how easy it would be to do roundels if you could do decals and a GMA and, and needless to say, the Miss Ashley logos, the 38s. Think of if we can get a real reliable way to do decals, easy and reliable, and get it documented on video. Oh, boy, I, that'll be an asset for a lot of people in a lot of different parts. It'll be... 
Here's an, another example. Just how many.